everybody, it's the time of the day when we tell you everything that's buzzing in the startup space. I'm Priya Shait and a very warm welcome to all of you to the Daily Dispatch. Now on today's show, I'm going to talk about three companies that have been in news today. And the three companies are Twitter, MobiQuick as well as Swiggy. Now moving on to the first headline of the day. Now all of us are aware that microblogging company Twitter has been in the eye of the storm over its alleged failure to comply with the new IT rules in India. And among other requirements, the rules mandate the appointment of three key personnel, which is the chief compliance officer, the nodal officer, as well as the grievance officer. And now Twitter has gone ahead and named Vinay Prakash as its resident grievance officer for India. Well, it's clearly raining IPOs and that's our second headline of the day after food delivery platform Zomato recently filed its DRHP. Payment startup MobiQuick is all set to file its DRHP next week and reports suggest that MobiQuick is planning to raise as much as $250 to $300 million through an initial public offering. Now, earlier this year, for all of you who have been watching the Daily Dispatch, Upasana Taku had confirmed IPO plans to Daily Dispatch. We are very aggressively working and MobiQuick will be listing in 2021, I can assure you that much. So we are working very hard towards the listing and the next uh, six to nine months are really going to be of, uh, uh, you know, importance for us to getting that done. Now moving on to the final headline of the day, food delivery platform Swiggy has elevated and appointed Fani Kishan as the co-founder at Swiggy uh, in founder Sri Harsha Majeti's words. Fanny joined us early on in 2015 and has been my fixer and go-to guy for many important problems. And interestingly, Fanny has been credited to have set up multiple high leverage functions from ground up. Well, moving on to our second segment, I have with me who's someone who's launched a very interesting kind of fund uh, of 48 hour turnaround time for seed funding and an interesting opportunity for a lot of uh, startups out there. I have with me Sudhir Sethi from Chirati Ventures. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today on the Daily Dispatch. I want to talk to you about this existing 48 hour turnaround time. Uh, what was the thought process behind this and how will it really work for the startup space? So, uh, Priya, thank you for inviting me. Um, pleasure to talk to you. Um, first and foremost, it's not a fund. It's a program. I just want to clarify that. And um, so what we see in the market, we are seeing um, India has a tailwind in technology entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs are building faster companies uh, to a bigger scale um, in a shorter time frame. And <clears throat> fundamentally, it's also important that we as a VC uh, have a look at the companies which the new companies which we see and not sort of take a call which takes months uh, to invest. So effectively, uh, uh, as a venture investor, we have to demonstrate uh, agility, we have to demonstrate speed and obviously substance in terms of how fast we can inform the entrepreneur back in terms of our decision. Uh, we thought 48 hours is a good time and for smaller transactions, of course. And that's our first foray into the venture tech world where seed investment should be faster uh, with enough homework done to add value. And whether the answer is yes or no, we will certainly get back to the entrepreneurs as to what we are doing. I think that's the context. <laughs> Um, of the 48 program and we are committing that we will take a decision uh, in that 48 hours so that the entrepreneur knows where we are. So, you know, maybe sometimes we'll goof up, but I think we should be able to do that. We, we've prepared for this program for months to get it right. So let's see what happens. Right. As I understand, uh, applications have already started coming in. So what's been the kind of initial response uh, out there? And uh, are there lots of startups that want money right now? I think that's a foregone conclusion. I think there is a tsunami which has been building up in the country on startups, more and more entrepreneurs. We see somewhere two and a half to 3,000 new companies every year. And uh, I would say maybe two years from now, our, uh, our uh, looking at companies would increase to something like 5,000 a year. So we are basically preparing for that. And we also want to meet those innovative entrepreneurs uh, who have uh, disruption either in technology or product or business model or revenue model faster 
uh, and sort of association with them early on because that's where we can add value. Uh, we have started receiving uh, applications. Uh, we always received deals, but we have started receiving actually a bigger way because I think it's very important. Entrepreneurs respect the fact that a VC can take a decision much faster. Uh, you know, talk to us about the kind of ticket size uh, for investments that you'll be looking at. And is there an upper limit as to how many startups could be funded by this program? We have not kept any boundary conditions, but uh, we're looking at, um, let's, let's divide it in verticals. We're looking at uh, agri-tech, we're looking at gaming, we're looking at consumer tech, we're looking at fintech, we're looking at health tech, uh, we're looking at SaaS in a big way. Uh, we're also looking at companies which have the potential to transform themselves through digitization or digital transformation potential companies, right? which are in the traditional sectors right now, because I think the whole digital and technology based enablement will make current companies also uh, uh, much more efficient. Uh, we're looking at marketplaces. So, so I think there is no, let's say boundary condition, anything new, anything disruptive, using technology to solve challenges which have not been solved before can be only solved by technology uh, is what we are looking at. And I've defined the verticals. <clears throat> um, I think technology is very important here because technology enables you to disrupt in a very different manner and, and help the company grow stronger. So we're looking at artificial intelligence, we're looking at robotics, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, the whole space of IoT, we're looking at every single thing, even data science, uh, you know, so there is in technology, there is no definition which we have. Uh, we want to look at the space industry. Uh, we want to look at the aerospace industry uh, overall. So I think those the world is wide open. Uh, India is producing globally relevant companies uh, which have scaled. But we are looking for specifically one thing. And that is companies who have products which can actually be taken on an international scale. Right, that's an interesting perspective from your side. I want to step uh, a little back and talk to you about the larger funding landscape. Uh, you know, as we speak, there are so many funds that are getting launched into the market uh, with huge corpuses. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of cash that's chasing startups at this point in time. Do you think valuations at this point are uh, particularly high as compared with what we've seen over the last one or two years? I think the early stage valuations are not you know, they are inflationary increase, let's say, or inflationary plus increase every year, which is perfectly normal. <clears throat> I also believe that um, the angel funding is very active, even more active than what it was a year or two back. And to that extent, we are finding that companies which we are investing in, uh, if let's say three years back uh, had a paper plan, today they have paper plan, uh, sorry, a plan, but they have uh, technology, they have with angel funding produced some products and also maybe have a few customers. So you know, valuation cannot be looked at as a loan. Valuation has to be looked at along with the fact what's the progress with the company has made before, let's say, people like us come in at seed or maybe a series A uh, as such. I just want to go back to the earlier point I made. So we are wanting, we are wanting to look at technology companies, startups who can go global. It's very, very crucial to us. And that, let me give you an example. <clears throat> We've got almost 40% or 45% of our companies who have a global footprint in more than 60 countries today, right? Um, whether it is Cult or CureFit, which is in US, whether it is Lenscart in Singapore and US, whether it is First Try in the Middle East, Healthify Me in over 12 countries, uh, Emotix, which has a consumer robotic uh, companion robot called the Miko, which is on 40 countries right now, Play Shifu, Play Simple, which we just had a great experience in, uh, was basically international company. Uh, so that's very, very crucial because I think Indian companies uh, are producing products which are globally relevant and competitive uh, in the market space and they can get a global market share. Uh, that's very, very important for us. And I think that's what we are finding right now. I wanted to understand in terms of 2021, mm -hmm. what would be the focus of your venture fund? Um, you know, I want to understand in terms of investments, uh, are, are there new funds that you're working on in terms of bringing to the market? Uh, and what about exits? Uh, these two points that you can elaborate on. Uh, look, we invest um, about 100 to 150 million dollars a year. That continues. Uh, we invest every year. We divest every year 
a scale close between 75 to 100 million every year. We're doing that right now. Uh, we just, uh, you know, Play Simple was a big one for us. Um, and so I think uh, 2020 was somewhat slower, no question about it. Uh, but still, it was not relatively slow. I mean, just to give you an example how our portfolio companies grew, um, our portfolio, our active companies, so we've invested in about 100 companies. Our active portfolio is uh, about 60 right now. The revenue of those active portfolio is uh, about 1.2 billion and the valuation is uh, approximately 11 billion which is 0.4% of India's GDP. Last year, our revenue of portfolio companies grew by 23% and valuation grew by 46%. Okay, and 42 out of our 60 companies grew faster during COVID times. What, what does that mean? It means that technology and scale in technology and, and funds who are promoting these technology or rather follow on rounds coming from funds is actually growing faster in India than it was even 18 months ago. And the reason is because they are solving real challenges in the market space. Okay, whether it is in health or finance or, uh, you know, in, in gaming or in, uh, in um, SaaS as an example. So you will find that investors like us will always work with a thesis. We want to build, coming back to our Sonic program, we want to build thesis. We want to be faster. And we want to make sure that <clears throat> we fundamentally look at companies which can grow faster. So entrepreneurs are agile. The VC has to be agile. There is no question about it. So we are just, in some sense, we are playing catch up in some sense. Right. That's an interesting perspective. Uh, so what we take away from this is that you're going to continue the momentum uh, as far as both funding and exits uh, are concerned. You're in your, and there's no change uh, out there in terms of overall allocation. Uh, no, 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 there's no change. It's better increasing. And because India permits you to do that, number one. In fact, we are hiring right now. We're a team of 21 people. We'll be 30 by the end of this year. We've already onboarded four people to make sure that what we are doing becomes a higher skill. Right. On that note, uh, we wish you all the very best uh, with your activities, uh, both on the fun side as well as on growing the company at large. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you so much for being a part of the Daily Dispatch. Thank you so much for inviting me here, Priya. And uh, all the best to you. And stay safe. Well, time now to wrap up this edition of the Daily Dispatch. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you tomorrow at 5pm. Goodbye and stay safe.